People who have hired other people. What are some unexpected ways a candidate has disqualified themselves from decreased their odds of getting a position they applied for? Refuse to say, I don't know. Usually, our interviews for software engineers are set up to increase the difficulty of questions until it's really unlikely and unexpected that the candidate will be able to answer them. It's entirely expected that, eventually, the candidate will have to say, I don't know the answer to that. From there, we explore how you might find out, etc. This is an important thing to discover about someone because, inevitably in our line of work, something comes up where you don't know the answer and have to figure it out or learn it. If the candidate persists in some kind of smear of bulls instead of just admitting ignorance, that's a big big red flag. Nobody knows everything, and the true judge of a software engineer's competence is how and how well they learn something new, not so much what they already know. I actually got my job because I said I didn't know to a lot of answers. The other interviewee, from what I was told, BS's a lot of questions and got them wrong. They figured I was honest and that I was teachable. That was 5 years ago. Still in the same job. I just remembered one more. I had a candidate bring his mother into an interview, as in actually trying to help him answer. I asked her to leave and then told him directly that she is harming his career. He was fresh out of undergraduate, but that's still pretty bad. I've been on several hiring committees and once we were attempting to hire for a programmer position and one of the candidates was asked something to the tune of a user has experienced a bug with some software you've written. How do you handle the situation and the candidate answered something along the lines of I would take the software back to the vendor and ask them to fix the bug. The obvious answer being, you're the programmer, you document and fix the bug. Overall it wasn't a nail in the coffin answer mind you but adding this candidate's no programming experience and no knowledge of any individual programming language, it was enough to make us pass on this particular person. Submitting dozens of very detailed pencil drawings of gay P. I mean they were reasonably well done, but the job was for a corporate graphic designer. I thought it showed a lack of judgement. Should have stuck to a more typical portfolio but hidden penises in the drawings. I was interviewing for a truck driver position and spontaneously, I asked how long the candidate has been driving for. Surprise, he didn't know how to. On the plus side, no bad driving habits. One gentleman stated that he lost his previous job because of an incident he instigated. His reason was that he didn't have control of himself because his microchip had been hacked. He then went on to say that he can generate energy by putting copper around his wrists and ankles to charge up. This is gold. I once had a candidate bring up an illegal gambling habit as a way to show how good they were at working around rules and reading situations. I don't think the candidate was good at reading situations. Gonna say something about myself here. My first job interview ever. I am a grade 11. I think a junior is what it's called in the US so this was only about half a year ago. So there's this job fair for a Harvey's, like Subway with burgers, opening soon. I make a resume and sit down with my interviewer. I am clearly nervous and most of my answers are quiet and not that good. But the zinger is when he asks me the question if you could be a burger topping, which one would you be? I was completely floored and found myself unable to speak for the most awkward 60 seconds of my life as I desperately try to muster up an answer. After shifting around in my chair for a solid minute I spew the word tomato and nothing else. He just looked at me for a few seconds before continuing without a word of acknowledgement. I never heard back from them. To be fair that is a freaking stupid question. I was recruiting for a data analysis specialist, and I got a CV from an MSc in computer science who ticked every box, and then some. It's just a shame he didn't think to put an email address or phone number on his CV. Hey, hey, I have one. This happened yesterday. I'm a hiring manager at a fast food restaurant, but at the place I work, even as the assistant manager. I don't have a uniform which distinguishes me from a team member. We also run with only a handful of people at a time. So I am on the floor doing the same work as the crew. As I think it should be anyway. But I digress. Young man walks in. 1920. And is trying to get my attention while I'm on headset. Taking an order. I tell him I'll be with him in a moment. Rather than waiting. He decided to lean over the counter and half yell. Can I get a pen? With an application in his hand. 
I motioned to one that was on the counter, and when he turned it in, not only had he worked in fast food before, for less than a month, but enough to know not to bug someone taking an order, but he had applied for manager despite having no previous management experience. For bonus points, he handed it to me with the same abrupt, loud obnoxiousness. Give this to your manager please. Thought about throwing his application away in front of him. Have done it before for similar reasons. But I decided instead I'll let him show up for his interview. With me. And explain to him in detail why he will not be getting a job. It's a minorish thing. But nobody wants to work with a punk butt who thinks he can treat people like that because they're not a manager. Or, I guess, don't look like one. At the time I was running a painting crew, this guy begged me for a few hours of work, said nothing was beneath him and needed a real paycheck to get his parole officer off his back. I told him I have a bunch of grunt work you can do, I'll pay you fair but the work sucks and I can't promise you a role as a painter. If you want this you need to prove yourself as a hard worker. He says no problem, when can I start? I tell him show up tomorrow. Bring clothes you can get dirty and plenty of water. The next day rolls around he's 45 minutes late. You could walk to the job site in 45 minutes and he drove. And is dressed up. Not a good first impression but I'll give the kid a chance. I set him up with a 5 in 1 tool and about 200 square feet to scape old paint off of. Even for a new guy it's at best 4 hours of work. I check up on him after about 45 minutes. He has scraped about 3 square feet of the area and is texting when I walk down. I retrain him. Give him a specific target for the next hour and leave. I come back an hour later. He is still texting. Has a done half of what I asked him to and is acting like he has done me a favor. I tell him this is unskilled labor. All you need to do is move your tool over the old paint. You aren't keeping up. I don't want to see you on your phone again. Third time I come to check on him he's sitting down texting in the shade. I ask what's up he says scraping paint sucks. When do I get to be a painter? I explain to him I didn't need any painters. I hired you as a favor. Pick up the pace. I drew a line and told him. I expect you to finish scraping this in the next hour. I came back down an hour later. He was texting. He had accomplished about 25% of what I had asked. He asked me if I had any water. He was thirsty and when lunch was, I told him, lunch is right now, and a storm's coming so take the next few days off. I swung by his house with a paycheck for the few hours he had worked that day told him I found a more experienced guy and wished him the best. A few weeks later he asked me to launder his pot dealing profits into paychecks from my company and he would give me the grand rate of $5 for every 200 I paid out to him. I declined. He's a successful real estate agent now. But I'd never buy a house from him. I heard about a parent who took their child somewhere to fill out an application. While the kid was filling out the application, the parent struck up a conversation with the manager, saying how their kid is lazy, disrespectful, and never listens, and how they want this job to whip their kid into shape. After they leave, the manager tosses out the kid's application was returning after lunch, had my usual space cut off right in front of me by a very rude gent who told me to go park with the secretarial pool where I belonged, I brushed it off, parked elsewhere and went to my office, 10 minutes later the same gent walks in, I was the senior director interviewing him for a manager position. We had someone copy and paste in forum code for a coding exercise straight into the email, so not an attachment. After sending in an example that didn't work, it still had the forum's formatting, line numbers, and everything. It's a very simple exercise that's supposed to take an hour. Basically like shift the elements in the array by a given input etc. Dart pop, goes their chances of the job. I'm a manager of a dog daycare. I always have my dog in with us when we do interviews just to see their general response to dogs. One girl recoiled in disgust when my dog walked up and nuzzled into her. We didn't hire her. I'm not in a position to hire people yet, but got this funny story from my father. Basically he went out on Friday evening with friends to drink some beers and they got beaten up by some drunken idiots who just look for fights when they are drunk. The next Monday, my father was holding hiring appointments, and the guy who beat him showed up to apply for a position under my father. He didn't get the job. Phone interview, could hear typing by the candidate over the phone anytime a technical question was asked, 
I'd rather you make up an answer so I can understand your thought process than have you mimic word for word what you found on Wikipedia. On the application it asked, may we contact your former employer, if not please explain. He responded, number, because he hates me. Guy came in for the interview that was basically a shoe in for the job. However, he spent the entire interview acting like the interview was just a formality and as if he actually had the job already. It was clear that he did not prep at all and blew quite a few questions. Overall terrible interview, ended up losing the job to someone who was a second place candidate to him but nailed the interview. In a section of the application where we ask if they have a felony record, they answered yes. In the following field asking about details of said felony they had put they had embezzled funds from their previous employer, then assaulted that employer, then assaulted arresting officers. While I admire the honesty, that's gonna be a no from me dog. Our application had the standard, have you ever been terminated from a position, and if so, why, now, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, you can get around this question if you're clever enough to coordinate your references to avoid it, I had other positions to fill, I'm not gonna look into every place you've ever worked, I just want to see how you answer that question, if you give a thoughtful, honest answer, cool, if you say no, I'm not gonna question it unless you give me a reason to. But I had one lady who answered with a full rant that basically went, well, I was told that I messed up a date on a calendar which I did not but what I think happened, and proceeded to detail paragraphs worth of gossip about her previous employer that she learned from opening her mail. Yep, can't imagine why they didn't want you around anymore. A close friend of mine once told me of a very interesting experience she had involving an interview. An interview that she had no part of at a company she was not connected to. A guy once interviewed for a position at the company in question, and the hiring manager was very impressed by the interviewee's portfolio. It was some truly stellar work. It was especially impressive because the hiring manager had known the interviewee in college, and the particular project he was showcasing was well above his skill level. The interviewee described how he had done all the work on this specific project, a group project in college, and then after the interview, went on his way, thinking he had nailed it, wanting to get to the bottom of the discrepancy between the quality of the work demonstrated and the quality of the work at claiming to have done it all. The hiring manager took a closer look at this particular piece of the portfolio and found the other name on it, my friend's name. He found her contact information, gave her a call, explained the situation, and explained that he could tell the work was hers, not the interviewees. He knew this because it was some of the best work he had ever seen, and well beyond anything the interviewee was capable of, and thus clearly a project she had shouldered the full weight of. The interviewee had applied for the position claiming her hard work was his own. The manager went on to tell her that, although she had not even applied for the position, it was hers if she wanted it. I'm always annoyed by instances of group projects where one member gets stuck with the brunt of the work while the others just take the credit. And I'm infuriated by stories of plagiarism. So I was pleased by this particularly poetic resolution to both of those problems at once. TL. DR. A guy once interviewed for a job trying to pass off my friend's work as his own. The hiring manager saw right through it and offered the job to my friend. She hadn't even applied. Parking in a clearly designated reserved spot right in the front of the building. It just shows to me that you don't have any respect for our rules. Invited a candidate to come in for a test. As part of the emailed invitation to the test, as well as the written instructions at the beginning of the test which I had to read aloud to them as they followed along. There were explicit instructions if you have a disability which requires accommodation please advise us before beginning the test. Candidate said nothing. Our long test ends. Candidate now tells me she has a disability that means she won't have done well on the test. Asks me how she can go about filing a complaint for discrimination in the hiring process. If you are an assistant manager and applying for a new job, do not write fully qualified buttman and describe previous buttman positions all over your resume. My best friend hires for an organization that provides caregivers to vulnerable adults. One applicant, when asked how you would handle a client who is refusing to do their chores or go to work, responded sometimes you just gotta force it, like, it's not good to slap them, but sometimes you just gotta make them work. I was interviewing a white woman in her 50 stroke 60s, 
I asked what she thought was her biggest weakness. Well, I don't work well with the blacks. Yet, I'd say that's a pretty big weakness. I was just floored. I've been debating posting this because of how ridiculous it is. She seemed like such a nice lady up until that point. It just goes to show, you really can't judge a book by its cover. I'm a web developer, and at the time was leading a team of about 10 devs. We were recruiting pretty heavily, probably 2-3 interviews a week and I will always remember this one guy. He turned up late to the interview. No biggie, it happens. Bit after we did our introductions etc and explained the role a bit more he interjected. I'm sorry to interrupt, but are you old enough to be making the decision to hire me or not? Will you be the one deciding? He then followed this up with a rant about not enjoying web development because he couldn't keep up with the rage of change of tech. Several years back, I had the misfortune of interviewing a fellow for a role in a film shoot. Although the production technically had someone in charge of screening resumes, they were far better versed in the recruiting process than they were in what qualifications were necessary for the job. As a result, less than half an hour before I was supposed to meet with an applicant, I was handed a document that would have made most pathological liars blush. According to the resume, my interviewee had been an uncredited consultant on over a hundred feature films. While there certainly are cases in which a given worker goes uncredited, it has even happened to me. The sheer magnitude of the fellow's claim went well beyond the realm of believability. Furthermore, the guy had listed quite a few alleged skills that seemed to suggest a less than complete knowledge of the industry. My favorite claim was that he had expert level Apple box skills. For the record, an apple box is literally a wooden box. That's it. There are a few different sizes, and they're used whenever something needs to be stacked on top of a box. I went ahead with the interview anyway, if only because I was curious about how the guy would back up his various claims. He turned out to be maybe 20 years old, which was far too young to have worked on many of the films that he had listed. When pressed, he explained that he had consulted on each of them by writing letters to the people involved in the productions, in which he outlined several suggestions on various things. Suffice to say, he didn't get the job, though I'm certain that he listed himself as an uncredited consultant on it, simply because he attended the interview. TL. DR. Lights. Camera. Exaggeration. I once had a dude in an interview. He did well enough that we might have held a second interview and hired him. However, on my way back to my desk, I had a chat with the receptionist. As it turned out, he'd misremembered his interview time and came in 30 minutes early. While waiting, he made all sort of fuss, asking multiple times how long he still had to wait still. The receptionist thought he acted rude and pushy. We did not pursue further. Morale of the story. It doesn't matter what role you're interviewing for, don't be disrespectful. I became good friends with one of my co-workers who was part of my initial interview. After a few months I asked him how many applied for the job. He said there were three they considered. One didn't have enough experience, then there was me, then this other guy who was almost overqualified for the position. I asked my co-worker what happened to the overqualified guy. He said this guy would have gotten the job if he wasn't so overconfident. All of the answers to the interview questions went something like oh, I can handle anything you throw at me or I do everything perfectly or I never need help. I'm smart enough to figure it out. But that was enough for my boss to nope him the frick out of there. My boss said it sounded like the guy wouldn't be a team player and would probably never admit he made a mistake. Made me laugh because, when they asked tell me about a time you made a mistake and how you handled it, I was like there are so many on the inside, of course. Interviewed a candidate recently for a wealth management position working with high net worth ultra high net worth clients and asked the usual, where do you want to be in 5 years question? Their response, I would like to be a record producer, or maybe an actor, but not in a starring role, just a side character, or maybe just doing commercials, something like that. I don't want to be too famous. It's dead. Fricking. Silence. From everyone on my side of the table. A super qualified candidate came to our office, when one of the women from our office walked out to greet him and bring him back to the conference room for a meeting. He made a comment about her legs being attractive. She brought him to the room, told her boss, who was the manager of the hiring manager, and he went in the room and said don't even unpack your bag, we don't need to have this interview and sent him home. Nice, 
I got hired without an interview. That resume builder site really works. Not me but a buddy of mine. He was interviewing a candidate and said okay Bob, I'm going to need you to give me 3 reasons why I should hire you, and the guy replied with well, I'm not violent, and I like women. I had a candidate who told a long story about being kicked out of the navy due to him be arrested at a Taiwanese brothel during shore leave. This in response to the question how well do you know Microsoft Word? Dude came into the interview wearing sweatpants, football jersey and Timberlands. This was for a higher level executive sales position in a professional firm. I saw him waiting and he was playing music loudly on his cell phone in the reception area. I told him that based on his attire and behavior with the speaker that he should probably go home and save us both some time. I was promptly called a racist and he kicked over a plant on his way out. And you want me to hire you to represent our company to clients? If his response had been polite and professional and he made a compelling argument to still be interviewed I would have continued. Oddly, littering. Had a guy doing outside work for us who smoked and, without a word to us, threw the butts of his smoke straight to the ground all over our yard. It wasn't even all that noticeable. I was just insulted that the guy would do that on his current employer's private property. I interviewed a young guy and asked him what his last job was like. It sucked, he said. What didn't you like about it? The people. What was wrong with the people there? They were all stupid. I knew from that first answer I wasn't going to hire the guy but figured I owed him the conversation. Everything was negative. Nobody wants to hire someone like that. I had a candidate straight up tell me she was getting over her addiction and applied for this job because she wanted something easy and not stressful. She was applying for a management position. Sorry mom. Good luck on turning your life around. But not in my workspace. I was hiring people for a sales position and one of my interviewees came in and basically bullied me during the process by not answering questions that I was required to ask and asking me unrelated and irrelevant questions. When I asked him to name something he's proficient at he says I'm the best salesman you're gonna get. Lady, needless to say, I wasn't sold. Rating himself a 10 stroke 10 on something very technical right out of school and then proceeding to know very little about it when asked. That sort of overconfidence is costly in my profession. I was interviewing people for a medical device sales position. One of the candidates brought along her day planner customer list to show how she organized her day contacts etc. After each there were some notes. I was glancing through and saw next to one it said super gay definitely frick skies. I pointed it out. She started stammering and trying to explain. I don't recall what I said exactly, but ended the interview. Did not receive the customary follow up email expressing interest in moving forward in the process. Interviewed a guy with my female equal colleague. When I asked questions he'd state directly at me and answer them to me. When she asked questions he'd state directly at me and answer them to me as if I had asked them. Pretty gross. I had a guy ask if there was any way around the drug test the company required to be hired. When I told him that I didn't think so, but that he would have to take that up with the HR contact he was working with. He then went on semi, rant about how you can't trust the accuracy of commercial testing places that administered the test, and that he was going to discuss using a home test kit with the HR person, and that having to take drug tests in general wasn't a good policy if the company really wanted to get the best talent. While I supported his reasoning for non-necessity of drug screening, especially for the graphic designer role he was interviewing for, it just didn't set well with me how adamant he was in this stance and the diatribe that accompanied it, and figured the dude wasn't going to be worth the trouble to work with, and didn't hire him. He asked how he would be paid if he got the job, a W-2 employee or 1099, independent contractor then proceeds to tell me that he would prefer 1099 because he has 4 kids and 2 exes that he has to pay court ordered child support to through wage garnishment and he can get around that by being a 1099 employee. All I really heard out of his mouth was I don't give a crap about my kids and probably won't give a crap about working for you either. Spaniard's dog. My colleague and I were interviewing for a construction role. The skills requirement was pretty specific. This chap passed the phone screening and we asked him in for an interview. When he arrived we all shook hands and sat down. 
He took off the satchel thingy he was carrying and set it on the floor, and then leant toward the bag on the floor and spent a full minute head down futzing inside the bag. No explanation as to what he was doing or any eye contact or anything. Just silence. A minute is a long time. My colleague and I glanced at each other shrugging WTF. He then pulled an iPad out of the bag. Apparently he'd been faffing about fitting a case to it. So, again with no explanation, he silently spent another minute setting up the iPad on its stand, which fell over two or three times until he got it perfectly balanced on the corner of my desk. Then set up the photo gallery app and set a slideshow in motion. All that done he launched uninvited into an explanation of the work the pictures in the slideshow, and why the pictures all showed construction work in Spain, and why he had relocated from Spain to the UK. It was immediately clear that all the work was utterly irrelevant to the vacancy. We got going with the first few questions in the hope the situation might improve, but he interrupted just about every single question to explain each new picture as it appeared on the slideshow. All of it irrelevant. I was about to wrap up and kick him out when he found his stride and started giving slightly more in-depth answers without interruption as the slideshow carried on. We did our best to ignore it but the bizarre hilarity of the situation almost got the better of my colleague and I a couple of times. We quickly worked out we couldn't look at each other for fear of bursting out laughing. After a few more minutes the construction phase of the slideshow ended without a guy noticing. There was some random picture of a car, then a picture of a night out with friends, then his kids, then a really close up picture of his wife, then a slightly more zoomed out picture of his wife getting ready for a night out. Pretty sure we weren't meant to see that one. By this time it was all we could do to not pee ourselves laughing. Then it happened. The next picture was of his dog. His dog was huge. A proper unit. It was reclining on a comfortable chair. On its back. With its legs in the air. With its massive, pendulous bollocks wafting in the breeze. I have no idea how I contained myself. We wrapped up the interview mere seconds later. Thanks. That's all the questions we have. We'll call you. Goodbye. Showed him the door. Watched him disappear around the corner. Then we died. I'm still dead. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.